it's warm in here, but I've been working in the little cabin for a few hours. And I've got the fire out there going, so I'm going to take some water and some tea supplies and go play in the cabin for a bit. All right, so we have temps in the single digits at night and maybe getting into the teens during the day, maybe getting as high as 30 during the day, which is pretty cold for us for um, this time of year. Usually it doesn't get that cold for another couple months, but we've been this cold since November. <sighs> See if I can show it all to you. There's the cabin. So I've got the stove out here going, the rocket stove going in the cabin. And it doesn't have running water. So any water that you use has to be hauled out here, which if there's just adults out here, it's not a big deal. It's when there's kids, the things are tricky. In the summer, there's a hand washing station and a cooking station, but in the winter, it's better just to do all that inside because again, no running water. So currently, I have the heat redirecting into the bench. It means the cabin doesn't warm up as quickly, but it means the cabin stays warm into the night instead of having the heat all dissipate. So the way that these rocket stoves work is that if you keep them going, or let the fire go out, but start the fire again before the bench cools down. It works 24 seven, you use a lot less wood, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the downside of the rocket stoves with the uh, mass attached is that if you let the fire go out, you have to heat the mass back up. The house stays cold because the mass is gonna absorb the heat before the air absorbs the heat, if that makes sense. So it is not a quick fix system. It is a system that requires finesse and presence. Somebody has to be here to feed the stove until the mass heats up. So today I am heating the mass <laughs> and I'm going to keep heating the mass until it's warm. And then, um, and then I don't know what I'm going to do. I just kind of wanted to come out and, you know, play with it. But what I did want to do was I wanted to come in and make some tea while I'm waiting. Gotta move my fan off. For just a second. Try to be really careful to set this somewhere that the fan blade won't get damaged. There we go. This is the little, I don't know what to call it, this little landscape that the girls made. They like to keep it here for the Airbnb. It has a little horse on it with a little drinking trough and hay for the horse and I think the feathers represent trees, but I'm not sure. And then this is tea that we grew that we leave out here for the Airbnbers to use. So for all of you, you who are like, well, why don't you have water there? Why do you have um, no plumbing? Why don't you have solar panels? Why don't you have X? Why don't you have Z? And the reason for that is we treat this cabin as something of a school, teaching people how to truly live off grid instead of being dependent on electricity coming in, even if that electricity comes from solar panels, it's still electricity. Um, and with water, uh, our frost depth is about eight feet, which means that there's no way really easily to get water here without, again, using electricity to keep hoses from freezing or to have a pump. And so we have a hand pump that allows people to pump their own water and bring it in and truly understand what it is to live off grid. Um, with pumping water, with lighting, with candles and oil lamps and warming themselves with a wood burning stove. And for three summers, the girls and I lived in this cabin 
while we were irrigating and taking care of the animals for the renters. Um, and so we have lived in it, and that's why it's as comfortable as it is, is we found ways to make it comfortable for us. We weren't here in the winters. We, we left by Thanksgiving every year, and that was because of the roads. We, we spent this, the winters in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It wasn't because this wasn't bearable in winter. It was that the only reason we were here was to irrigate, take care of the animals when they were birthing, and to keep trees and things alive rather than relying on our renters to keep them alive. So we had to get through the pass from Idaho into um, whichever direction we went. We had to go through some mountains in order to get to Oklahoma for the winter when we were done irrigating, and we had to make it through before the real snow came through. So that's why we would leave in the winter. But we have good cold temperatures in November. We had freezing temperatures here in the cabin while we were still living in it in late summer. So we have experienced it ourselves. And that's the reason why we do all this is I think some people think, well, why not? I don't know. To me, it seems important to have a skill to know what it's like to live off grid without any conveniences at all. I, I think it's just a good skill to have, a good mindset to understand. Because it's cold in here, I'm going to move my tea into my cup and then go move the cup over by the fire just because putting hot water into a super cold cup means that it chills the water off and it doesn't set good tea. right there so it's kind of warming up let's come fill up the wood box rocket stoves don't go through a lot of wood but they still go through wood so it's good to have somewhere to store the wood really close to the house. Oh, the other thing. So in the winter, I usually encase this in clear plastic. This year I didn't do it because with the quarantine, uh, we decided that it was easier just to leave this empty for a little while. But we kind of feel like we've got our feet under us again. And so I want to encase it in plastic and I will be using the old greenhouse plastic that you guys just saw me take off the greenhouse to enclose that. It makes a huge difference in how warm the cabin stays. So I need to enclose that here pretty quick. This is what a woodshed looks like when the kids are the ones who bring in the wood. So that kind of needs to be fixed up again, re-adulted. I'm gonna grab some wood in the meantime. Okay, it's been about three, maybe five minutes, which is pretty fast for a little wood burning stove to get there. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it so it's going back into the bench. I'm gonna pour my tea. back up and start it blowing back into the living room and wait for this to, to go. I'm actually going to put this up on there so that it stays warm. There we go. That's the progression. That is how we do that. 
this still prefers to be full, full, full. It wants a good bit of coal and then it wants a lot of wood on top of it. It likes to be fed. If you're charging something. Once you're, once you're gravel. Can you see that? Fire bricks and pebbles. Once this is charged, it's just getting close. Once that's charged, once that in there is charged, um, you can let the fire go out if you want. I have to go in and make lunch. I'm perfectly content to leave this out here with the air vents open and a new login. It's very safe. The door protects any kind of anything from coming through. And because it's a rocket stove, the chimneys are not actually hot. They couldn't burn you. This one would be hot because it's going into the bench, but <clears throat> this one's hot because it's going into the bench, but it's not hot like as in barely touch it, burn all your skin off. It's just warm.